I never prepared for a business. You know, I prepared for treating patients. I prepared, you know, with all the knowledge and the bedside manner and learning about patient emotional intelligence. But, but medical school never taught us about how we actually have to run a business. I wrote, well, today is all about emotional intelligence and how to be a better doctor. So everyone, I have Nanthony Menon, Dr. Nanthony Menon with me. Yeah. Nanthony, so your chapter, which is in the Ennobled Business uh, for Success series, mm -hmm. you really did a shift. You, you did a shift that, first of all, that you you spend this time in medical school, you go in, you really develop your business. And your your what was the what was the thing that you came to the conclusion as you were in this business and what medical school prepared you for? So medical school, so you're exactly right. You said that, you know, I I prepared my business and that's exactly what I didn't do. <laughs> I never prepared for a business. You know, I prepared for treating patients. I prepared, you know, with all the knowledge and the bedside manner and learning about patient emotional intelligence, but but medical school never taught us about how we actually have to run a business. How do we take care of our employees? How do we uh, do bookkeeping? How do we know what we need to do and how to run a business so that it lasts uh, forever or or for a lifetime, you know? Uh, so, and, yeah. When did you, because in your chapter, you go into this and you, you're like, wow, okay, and now here I am, right? After all these right. accolades and diplomas and, and, and you know, hard yeah. work. Yeah. So, what what made you lean into this? And then your whole chapter is about, you know, trusting your uh, inner intuition and emotional right. intelligence. What what made that shift? Like, wait a second, I don't have all the tools. Yeah. And so I, at the time when I was writing this chapter, actually at the time when all of this happened, my aha moment happened, um, it was at a point where, lots of internal dynamics was going on. You know, I had familial issues, I had spousal issues, I had work issues, and everything was related to um, basically what I talk about, you know, communication, and not realizing that we all bring our subconscious biases into any conversation and any situation that we're in. And I think the difference is, you know, as physicians, we walk into a room and we leave our personal life and our personal situations outside, and that's normal, you know, but when we leave that room, we carry it back again and we go home, except we also have all the emotions and frustrations of the patients and through the day our staff and everybody else on us as well when we come home. And I don't think this is something that's only with physicians. I think it's with all healthcare workers and maybe more so with the nurses and the other caregivers, you know, because we bark out orders and we just walk away, whereas, you know, they're left with the actual care of the person. And as an eye surgeon, I don't actually do inpatient medicine or uh, a lot of, um, you know, day-to-day -day care with people. Mine is mostly a surgical profession. So I see the person, I, I deal with the situation, and then, and then the primary care doctor and the other caregivers are left with the rest of the patient load, right? And so for me, uh, it was that point, I was also going through some... Um, hormonal issues at that time of my life, you know, because uh, you're at certain phases, you know, like adolescents, we have the other end. Um, you're a woman. 
Yes. And so menopausal, menopausal changes were going through me as well. And so it was a culmination of a lot of things at the same time uh, that, that when I went to figure out business about medicine, uh, the first thing uh, that I was taught or that I'm not actually taught, I was told to think about was how aware I am about myself and my own uh, personal stressors, you know, my own response to stress. And in a medical profession, that's not something we think about because we're constantly on 100%, you know, uh, because everything is a medical emergency until we decide what, you know, we're used to hierarchying and triaging. Right as ER doctors and as medical doctors, you know, when we get a phone call or somebody comes in to say this, 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 but who we need to see first, who we need to see next. But in our own personal lives, we don't realize that we're constantly in that stress mode, you know, that we bring it home and we don't realize that we're reactive in because it's people we love and it's, 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 we don't need to hold it in check, we think, right? But that's where we do our most damage because it is the people we love. So, so let, me, let me ask you a question here. And, and, and even the, the, the little nuance you made that the, the nurses or the frontline doctors that they even get to have the acknowledgement of the face-to-face -face stress that even you don't Correct. allow yourself to have that because yeah. you're once removed just okay. want to make known of that that you're 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 still not um allowing yourself that space that's what I noticed um Correct. so this is such a pivotal time in in medical and in, in, in the world and what we're doing and in the workforce. Yes. So, and I love that you're standing here with your vulnerability and you're standing it for others. Cause you have, you have, you have kids in school, you have, you know, and then you have um, other doctors that are really burnt out all the way through. Yes. Really, and you're sitting here saying, I'm going to stand out of my role as the doctor and bring forward my humaneness of who I get to be and allow that to then be that vulnerability to bring others forward. I love that. Thank you. And I acknowledge you for that, Thank but you. let's get into it. So these, these kids, are, kids are sitting in school, right? Medical. It's not the same. It's the world is not the same. Where, where are you telling them? where they get to be, what, what do they get to lean into to succeed in this new world, in this new medical world, in this, this place where doctors, nurses, frontline workers, and, and even the rest of us are hurting, are really stressed. And it's just not turning it off when you leave because you're taking it with you. What would you say to them? Um, the first thing that I learned uh, was, again, you know, learning my own, being self-aware of my own stress response and where I am. And just, you know, going through the day and learning to do a mental check, like before you enter a patient's room or before you leave a patient, person's room or before you have a, that meeting with your boss or whatever it is, you know, if you're a teacher, you finished one session, you're going into another session, just learn to just do a mental check on yourself. Okay. Is my blood pressure high? Am I, am I feeling the stress? Okay. I am. So why am I feeling that stress? Let me take a deep breath and bring it back down. Being self-aware in that sense and you realize so much about yourself when you do that. Like, I'll give you an example, like even for me, right? Um, when I, uh, about five years ago, I started develop, I got a rotator cuff injury uh, from moving things, okay? Not for actually 10 years ago. Um, and then um, I did the surgery. And ever since then, I always used to joke saying that my, my, 
my shoulders been straightened, but for some reason my hips are now I'm twisted, you know, because from, from having shoulder pain, I started having a hip pain, which I never had before. I, it got to a point I couldn't walk my dog you know, where I would go, go out to walk my dog, I would come back and I would have to do stretches and take pain medication because of this hip joint. And it wasn't the joint, it was muscle. And I didn't realize until I started working on my stress response, that I was holding my stress in that joint from the shoulder and the neck, it went down to the hip. And there were days that when I was really stressed, my whole right side would just be like almost frozen. And I learned like when I was through the day, when I started thinking about my stress response and wondering, okay, how stressed am I right now? Am I at 100%? Am I at a 50%? Where am I holding the tension? How am I? I don't have that pain anymore. I'm not on any medications. I'm not on anything you know, and I can like through the day, I can tell myself, Oh, you're holding your hip again, you must be stressed. Oh. So oh, it was yeah. literally your physical you're, correlation between that where you were holding your physical stress. Yes, yes. Okay, so so what do you what do you do? And, and this is this is a big piece too, is that how do you leave the doctor at work? So you, you know, you can't, and that's the thing, like as physicians and as moms or as teachers or whomever we are, we try to leave one self there and another self and bring the other real self home. But honestly, you can't. Okay. Okay it's all part of you, right? Um, it's, it's part of you. And so you have to be able to deal with the stressors and understand that, okay, I'm stressed and that's okay. Why am I stressed? Oh, it's because of this patient. And what am I going to do about it? Or it's because of this child that I'm teaching or uh, that coworker that's bothered, that's, that's not do, getting X, Y, and Z done. What can I do to make my myself feel better about it what can i do like for example you know okay this patient needs x y and z done i can't do it right now the lab is closed or whatever but i can do it first thing in the morning so put a task you know put that task down get it written down and come back in at eight o'clock in the morning and do it or seven o'clock in the morning or schedule it you know or if that coworker is not doing something, ask yourself, how does that affect my job? How does that affect me? You know, and then make the adjustments for that. I'm not saying you have to go and confront the person and say, hey, do your job better, because that's <laughs> that doesn't always work. That's not always right either, you know. So, I mean, there's so many ways you can handle it. It's just a question of, and again, it's a question, it goes back to your own emotional intelligence and self-awareness and understanding why you're irritated or upset or frustrated about something, right? And, and your book goes into, and I love this, too, I mean, the, 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 the chapter goes into our triggers, yeah. Right. And, and, and I love the inventory of our triggers because we do this work, right. Of, of, of learning who we are mm -hmm. and we have triggers. We have how we process our operating systems, how, how we connect with people yes. and, and your triggers never go away. They're just those things that pop up. So I love that you acknowledge like, okay, that person's really pushing that trigger, but that's that I get to own that. And then exactly. I get to work with that. Yes. As soon as you own it, you know, and you say, oh, that's my trigger. This and is me. you're not angry anymore or frustrated anymore because you realize, oh, that's just me reacting because of this. And you, and then you separate that emotion and you're like, oh, okay. I can now release that emotion and come back down to where I'm happy again, because that's gone, you know, and I did that simple thing again, just a couple of weeks ago. So 
everybody now has issues with um, uh, shortage of employees, right? Uh, people not having enough staff to help or employees to do certain tasks. And so our operating room is currently, you know, understaffed. Okay, so where normally as surgeons, we just go through the day, we don't take breaks, we don't, you know, we go, we take a bite to eat, we come back, we do the next patient, you know, we just go through the day like that. Um, but now we've had to break for lunch, you know, maybe it's a 45 minutes, or it's a half hour. And in the first time I had to do that, my brain understood, yes, I need to take a break. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to let people eat. You know, if they're not eating, I can't do my surgery and this and that. But inside me, I was still frustrated that I was waiting and I had three more, you know, I had X number of cases I still needed to do. And so then I sat down and I asked myself, why are you frustrated? Right? Um, and I thought to myself, well, it's because I'm concerned that I won't be able to finish my cases. And I said, no, that's not it because I finished my cases before early. So an hour is not gonna make that difference, right? So I said, what are you, what are you actually frustrated about? And I realized, so I've started, I recently started working here in this, in this practice. I, I moved uh, jobs and I'm three, three months into doing surgeries in this, in this uh new uh, uh office but new it's new yeah it's new okay. uh, i mean surgeries are not new i've been doing surgery for 20 years but um but this new place the new practice and they don't know me right so they they so so for me to ramp up to a certain level of productivity i need to I need to show that I can finish and I'm on time and, and I'm, I'm efficient, right? And so that's what was bothering me. The fact that if I give up this hour, then I'm gonna to prove to people, people, you know, that I'm inefficient. And I can't do that many surgeries like the other surgeons in the practice. And how is that going to, and so it was that little ego thing on my back saying, hey, you're not as good as other people or whatever people are going to think, you know, and then, and so then I sat down and I was, and I said to myself, so if I really wanted to prove that I was efficient, all I have to do is my time in time out and people will know that I'm capable Right. And immediately, as soon as I realized what my factor of stress was and what my frustration and fear was, my fear of not being as good or as efficient as everybody else, you know, as soon as that was taken away, I was like, okay, take two hours. I don't care. I'm so fine. you, you, you <laughs> turned finally inward. Cause that's all about inward. It's all about inward of how you were processing that. So let me, let me ask you a question here because my, my controlling analyzer who, who you get to be in this field, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. That so someone said, all right, that makes sense right out here. Yeah. But I don't know how to do that. Right. It's still so the the first I mean, it's working. First of all, you would tell people that this is continual work. Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm a work in progress. <laughs> the, the other piece. So the how does someone who, you know, again, is, 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 is in, in the same place that you are, you know, as how how did you how do you get to start? What would what would be that like that to let it go and 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 to to allow that allow yourself to permission for yourself to to let that go to say you know and by the way you get to eat lunch too exactly yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
So, so what would you say? What would you say? Your other colleagues and other people in the same are very, you know, high profile, high high demand, high stress, and their their operating systems are very much analyzers and people that are usually in control. Yeah. How do you say to them that it, you, it actually gets better if you use emotional intelligence? And this is how I started. Correct. Yeah. So. Uh, it does get a lot better and it's still a work in progress. And there are still times when I'm, you know, in a room with a patient and I need help uh, and I'm the only person in the room that I'm irritated or get stressed that the person that's supposed to be assisting me is doing something else, you know, um, and then I come out huffed, you know, for a second, but then where before I would go in and find the person and say, hey, where are you? I need you, da, 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 da. Now I take a step back and I say, you know, I really needed you in that room. I really, um, but then it's it's not that they were slacking off, you know, giving people the benefit of the doubt and taking out our own assumptions mm-hmm. off what that person is doing, like that colleague who is not doing what you think they should be doing. Instead of confronting them and asking them, hey, how come you didn't do this, that, the other? Like you, like we all, you know, ask them, hey, how are things with you? What's happening? You know, we were supposed to get that deadline. What happened? Is there something I can do to help? Mm. You know, and suddenly you find out, oh, so-and-so didn't make it. And so I have to do this other thing before I could come to help you, you know? And then you're like, oh, okay. You know, so going in with that attitude of, uh, of not make, not getting that, that negative assumption of people which is where I think a lot of our stressors today are from, because we automatically run into that negative, you know, oh, that person, oh, he, oh, she. Judgment. 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 Righteousness, right? Those are good ones, too. Yeah. 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 And and being, working on that and giving yourself the ability to, to just take a step back and say, could there be another reason? You know, and the simple example that everyone always gives is, you know, when somebody cuts you off in in a traffic jam, like, how do you react, you know, and and that's been used so often that now when you hear it, you don't actually think about it and you don't you don't ever do it right in the car. You're sitting there and you don't say, oh, that person's mom might be in the hospital and that's why they're in a rush and cutting me off. I'm going to let them go. Yeah. You know, so taking that little thing and I actually, I think when we're younger, we, when we're new in the workforce, we're more apt to not making assumptions about people because we don't know how we're supposed to be working or what the, what the role is that we have, right? And then once you get in and you start working, you figure out your role And then you start making assumptions about other people's roles. And that's where the whole, and it happens. uh, And then, and then you're not the same person and neither is that person that started. Right. And so reconnecting and figuring out the team and the roles and what you're good at and being very open in your communications of, okay, you know, this in this clinic today or in this, on in my job today, I had these are the problems I had. How do you think we can solve this so it doesn't happen again? You know, being open like that, I think helps. And this is not only for your business life, because I noticed it even in my personal life. And what I was talking about the roles, you know, and going back to what we talked about earlier, Mm -hmm. where I had uh, emotional, you know, I had issues with my personal life as well as my, uh, my spouse, you know, and, and we talked about it, and we realized that I think it was us 
taking each other for granted because when you're married so when we first got married and I moved here I was studying for exams and I was doing 15 hours a day and and he um he was taking on a lot of things so that I could study and get back into medicine right and when I finally got back into medicine medicine is not uh, a field where okay once you get back you go nine to five and you're done right and so he continued to take on a lot of things and do a lot of things and support me. And, and we both assumed at that point, he was happy doing it. I was happy not doing those things. And we assumed that everything was fine. And 15 or, you know, the, the 15 to 17 year, when you start doing things, and you kind of designate these roles that each individual in your relationship is supposed to be doing. And suddenly we're not the same people. He had aspirations and desires of his work life that he was not getting fulfilled because he had to do other things. And, and all the stress that I was in, I was in a negative place. So I would come back and if he asked me to do something, I would be like, but, I have this and that to do and you're not doing that. So why is he, not, you know, that those assumptions. So you automatically, if you're bringing in the stress from home and from work at home, you're at, you're reactive. So you're not giving the person the benefit of the doubt. You're not asking him, Oh, okay. Why? What happened? How can I help you? You know? And and so there's a disconnect. And we finally, when we finally hit the restart button and started talking about it, we realized, oh, okay, we made assumptions about our roles and we thought each other were happy in our roles, but we've both changed and we need to change our roles, our dynamics in the relationship. You know, and that's all it is. And it's a work in progress, even at even at work. So, so let, let me let me ask you this because again, we're 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 talking about you know emotional intelligence and how to be a better doctor, but a better woman, a better person because you're all of those things. Sure. So, with with adopting this, mm -hmm. the the benefits that you that so is your blood pressure down is is the when was the last time you went on a date with your husband? And do you know one new thing about your employees that you didn't know before? And do you eat lunch now? What's yeah, life like I now? actually one of the one of the changes that I've implemented in my life uh, because directly related to the pandemic is actually leaving the office for lunch. Good. Um, because uh, you know during the pandemic we had to go into the car to eat so we would step out because we didn't want to take our masks off in the office and then all of us get sick right right <laughs> the office shuts down and so we all started doing this and so now I actually even if I don't have time to go home or go out I leave uh, the office okay. uh, for at least 10 minutes go outside stand outside look at a tree or look at something you know different and don't look at my phone, <laughs> you know, and reconnect with just doing absolutely nothing for 10 minutes, kind of like a meditative nature, yep. meditate, you know, like not think about anything, not think about what I'm doing and just reconnect, try and find like something in the sky or a bird or chirping or, you know, force myself to listen to something different and come back into the room for for the for the afternoon yeah so I've done that um the last time my husband and I went on a date is easy because we went last Thursday after our book launch and we were in like seven countries and bestseller and this and that and I can't even count and I was just like oh my god I don't believe this and so we were yeah so we we did we did a date night so needless to say things are better yes yes much better yes Nanthony Menon Dr. Nanthony Menon um again um emotional intelligence how to be a better doctor and how to enjoy life more and yes. and better impact on this life 
Yes. Yeah. So, all right, everyone. Thank you. Great interview. And um, congratulations. And thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. It was lovely chatting. Thank you.